Okay, so we've gone through find and recode. We've gone through manual journals. We've gone through fixed assets. So assurance dashboard, this shows you how hard everyone's working and how many times they've logged, pretty much logged in. So you can see what kind of activity each person's doing. So Robert, you might like this one. <laughs> His, and, and you can see all of the tasks that have been completed. We go back to advanced settings, export accounting data. So if you wanted to export your data, you, you can do and you, you can put it into these types of formats. Description and billing, that's, uh, oops, that's, uh, history notes. Okay, so all of the all of the history of everything that's been done by everyone is, is here, and all of the notes are here as well. So let's say you wanted to search for, let's say for today, all of the tasks that happened. So here you can see just now, I've added a number of invoices on to zero you can see all of the things that have, have occurred. So all of the history that's happening in Zero is locked here. And then financial settings. So the functional currency is obviously fixed. You can't change that. Financial year end, you can change, but obviously I wouldn't advise that unless you really want to, because then others is going to change some of your reports. So if you have a year-to-date report and you've changed the financial year, the year-to-date is going to be different. When you enter your, when you start registering for VAT, you can then put the, the VAT basis. So you can add the tax ID number and the tax period, whether it's every month or every three months or every six months. Here's your, your tax defaults. And then this is where you lock the accounts. So let's say, for example, you've closed for the month. Here you would lock the period and then no one can make any changes after that date. So let me just put it back to Jan, for example, because okay, so that's that. Twelve accounts we've gone through. Tax rates. So we've already added the tax rates for VAT purposes. So when you're accounting for the first time, you're not going to have obviously you're not going to have any VAT. So we we'll put it in there for you, but obviously yeah. just be aware that they are there and you don't want to use that. You've got a tax exempt tax code that you can use for your transactions when you're entering them. And obviously the VAT reports are created based on the tax rates. Fixed asset settings are here. So let's say, for example, you wanted to create a new asset type. You can do that. So you'd put the asset type there. You select which account code to map it to, and then you add the depreciation method. Tracking. So I guess this is something that we need to discuss as we progress through the project. Obviously, there is no tracking that has been set up. You've seen from the dummy organization that you've got tracking for warehouse and the region, so north, south, east, west, for example. This is something that we just need to, once you you guys have decided on how you want to report it, we can then add tracking categories. Now, remember, you can only add two levels. So I can add another tracking ca category. I can't add more than two. But you can, for each tracking, you can have a, up to, I think, a thousand or two thousand. So, so here's, here, this is a tracking category. Here I can add up to a thousand options. Report codes. So report codes and report fields are quite useful in a sense that if I go into it. So this is useful because if I go to my reports, if I go to my new PL for example, so here you can see that this is basically my uh, chart accounts, right? So I've got my code, my account, my asset type and then my report code now the report code feeds into here your your pnl and let's say for example your current asset is you've got you wanted to subgroup your current assets into multiple categories you do that not through the chart of accounts but you do that through the report code 
So let's say you wanted to have liquid and illiquid current assets, you know, some things that are redeemable within 90 days and over 90 days, and you could add a, an, an additional analysis where it would then separate that out on the balance sheet and you can have a separate category there. So this is where report codes can, can come quite, quite handy in terms of the way you would structure your reports. So then your classic reports and the new reports are slightly different from that point of view. These can be imported and exported. So if you export it, it looks pretty much like the chart of accounts. Just open it up. So here you can see the report code. So this is exactly the same as the chart of accounts. The difference is these report codes is what you would predefine and change as per how you want to see your data. And then conversion balance isn't, this is not relevant for you because you don't have any opening balances. This is where you'd enter the opening balances. And that's it.